Hi everyone. I'm going to come and sit in front of you. I, don't even, I didn't even try this out to see if you can see me. But I've decided that I'm going to do a big pour on some fabric. It's a curtain and I'm wanting to do a project that requires some nice patterned fabric so I decided to pour fabric and see how I go and maybe I'll be able to use it. And I figured I may as well record it because I'm addicted to recording or addicted to pouring, addicted to collecting paint. The addiction never stops, does it? You, if you're not recording yet your own stuff, you really should. It really helps you learn so much. You can go back and look at what you've been doing and look at it through a different eye and work out where you could improve. It also is a great way to share with the massive pouring community. Um, I've worked out, and so would have you, that following many people and watching many people pour helps you become the best pourer that you possibly can do. It helps you build self-confidence and it helps stretch your mind to other places that you and do things you might not have considered. Whilst we all fundamentally do the same thing, such as cook an apple cake, there are many different ways to get the outcome of the apple cake and that's the benefits of watching many people doing lots of different videos. So I'm about to start. I'm probably going to record and just do the whole process in fast forward um, and not speak at all through it. Um, I'll just show you the fabric and then I'll get on with it. As you can see, it's massive and the backing of it is darkened out. So I'm really hoping that that's what's going to stop the paint from leaking through too much. Underneath I've got a massive amount of cardboard and it's double sided so that even if it does seep through the first part It will be caught onto the second part. I'll just show you like It's like this I'm probably going to swipe so I've got some big bits of cardboard ready because I really love the swiping cells um, And let's see how I go All right So the worst thing in the world happens and you think that you've pressed play and you haven't. So this is what I've done so far. And I just stopped to mix up a little bit more of the metallic uh, almond. And I'm pretty disappointed actually that much of the filming of this didn't come out. Some of the patterns are really interesting and it would have been good for you to see how they were done. But nonetheless, let's continue. bring the tripod down the other end. There we go. I'm just going to do a little bit of work just there. Um, I wasn't planning on getting the whole one piece of fabric in the one design. I'm actually wanting to make a series of poured prayer flags for myself and therefore I was wanting individual separate patterns and I feel like I've succeeded what I wanted to achieve really really well. I'm happy with uh, how some of the cell developments come out um, and I'm really happy with 
being able to use a lot of my leftover coloured paints in such a new different way. I'm interested to see how it dries. I'm going to get on with doing this last pour and let's see how it goes. Okay, I'll just wipe my hands there and I'll take the camera off the tripod and let's go and have a look around. Okay. As you can see, this was a dirty pool, you might not be able to see. And I dragged the cup here and because it's a fabric it's just sucked right in. But look at that we've got good cells here some really good interesting patterns and cells there and here and look at this part here i might have to work out there's a bit going on there so i might just oh, i think i might just leave it and over here's another cup again all differently poured Yeah, so as I was saying, I'm um, going to be making my own prayer flags for my backyard. Might even use it for my market stand. And each prayer flag will have a different series of colours in it. And it is looking beautiful. I'm really happy with it. This last part here that you just saw me pour, still got cells forming and coming through, which I'm really happy about. I think I might add some sparkles onto this while it's drying to make the flags really twinkle in the sunlight. So what an interesting experiment that was and I'm sorry we missed out on some of the uh, action but nonetheless that's I might add some of the glitter and then refilm it. Okay, good morning everyone, it's the next morning. Let's see how this fabric's dried overnight. Look at that, there's just some parts where the paint's drizzled. Jazzy, can you just move out of my way? She's desperately trying to give me morning leaks. Hi. Um, but look, considering that I'm going to be cutting this up into segments, which will be showing samples of colours and how they work together, and used as decoration for my market stand. I'm really happy with the way that this has come. Oh, you can see that I've sprinkled some glitter on it um, after it's been poured. And that was just so that it could be eye-catching in the sun. Now, I must tell you, the weather report for Sunday is poor. So, in terms of fabric, pouring is really successful. Let's see how it's stuck at the back. Oh, look at that. It's hardly even come through. Really successful. So remembering this was a curtain that's got that kind of... It's like a really, really light plastic backing that's meant to prevent darking. And um, I don't know if it actually worked for darking because I picked this whole sheet up for $5 at a op shop or a thrift shop. 
Um, so, so far, so good. This project's coming along really well. And there's some really nice parts of it that I can already see that I want to use deliberately for the end project. It's actually, as I'm doing this, making me feel like maybe I want to see how this goes on some t-shirts or something. Really good. Wow, some of the colours are awesome. Okay, so we'll let this keep drying because it's not completely dry. You can see there's some wet reflections. And it's two days later and everything's dried really, really nicely. As you can see here, some absolutely excellent examples of cell work and the kinds of effects that we look for um, when we're doing our paintings. So I'm really looking forward to getting turning this into the um, flags and look, absolutely glorious. Oh, it wasn't so good. As you can see on the back, the parts that did come through did not come through enough to... Oh, that actually looks really good. But anyway, the parts that came through did not come through even onto the cardboard. Look at that, the cardboard is absolutely unscathed. So as far as we know, um, placing this kind of curtain fabric onto cardboard and doing a pour will result in a successful outcome. And I've got many ideas now on how to use this fabric. I was even thinking of um, doing much more control paint um, experiments and seeing how just some nice tote bags would come up. Anyhow, I'm going to get on to chopping the flags up. Um, I'll show you how I'm going to do that um, with one or two and then show you the finished product. It was a really, really enjoyable uh, experiment this one and I encourage you to think about how we can use our pouring techniques on fabric and how utilising curtains like this and then making the curtain into a canvas is actually a great way to go. When I mean a, a, a canvas, the curtain is the canvas and maybe wrapping it around wood and uh, knowing that that could be a cost saving way to create beautiful artwork as well as upcycling. Really try to be mindful of not buying new things when there's so many awesome things around that can be reused and this is a great example of it. And here we are up to the last part of our flag making. So I cut all of the flags out using a cardboard template and I chose this size and this shape. And I'm just going to go through them and just show you how beautiful they all look separately. Oh, how's that? Good. And whilst we know that it looked like quite a mess on the fabric, when they're separately cut, you can see that they are a piece of art each upon to themselves. And there are some that I really, really particularly love, like this one coming up now, which really has some gorgeous cells and really good glitter in it. Oh, this next one's gorgeous. And again, this piece. That one's a really good example of fluid art and the movement that some people really like without cell work. And for me, doing this process was really actually very relaxing and I loved it. And it's given me so many ideas, as I mentioned previously, on how we can use fabrics in our art and how we can use fabric as actually being the canvas rather than continually spending heaps of money on canvases. So I hope you've enjoyed this project as I have and I'm really happy with the individual outcomes. I'll be pinning these around my um, market stand I think. Um, let me know if you have any questions and happy pouring everyone. Oh, by the way, look at how this dried. I did this ages ago. It was one of my favourite pieces and I just love how it's dried. And on another note, I'm preferring using this now rather than the big canvases because it dries more quickly and you still can't see the gorgeous colours this has in it, but it was really quite beautiful. Let's see if I can get some of that in. Anyway.
anyway, that's a nice image to finish on. Stay well, everyone, and happy pouring.